how do we walk in the spirit? I love Psalm 1. Psalm 1 is a psalm mommy make we learn from young. And I feel like most kids these days don't get to learn psalms anymore. I don't know what the kids them doing these days. But could we just teach them the word of God? I am not kidding. It will make their life easier. I cannot imagine when I watch the generation today, what is going to happen next few years when all of the world's headache and trauma and circumstance come upon them. How are they really going to deal with that? Because most of them are not learning the word of God. Most people would have grown up in Sunday school. You have a little VBS. You have, you know, the schools will teach you something. But what is happening with the generation growing up now? They know nothing about the word of God. It's going to be crazy. Could we just teach our kids the way? Say, show the child in the way of the Lord and he will never depart. That foundation will remain with them. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 1. A blessed man is a man that do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He does not stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. I love this piece. But you see, the blessed man is a man. He delights in the law of the Lord. Meaning, he loves God's word and he finds pleasures in God's word. I hear some people in the past say, I know really so much on the word. I'm on the spirit thing. But I can hear you know you more into the word. I, I get to understand if anybody who does not love the word of God, he does not have the spirit. Because he is the living word. If you have the spirit of God living within you, you're going to find pleasure. There's a joy. There is delight when you hear God's word being spoken. Actually, not that you will only find pleasure, but here what you will do. You will meditate day and night on the word of God. Every day and every night, you're going to search the scripture. So then I say, but Lord, something about this is, is connecting. Because if I put in the word of God, and I tell you, this is a formula for living right. If you put in the word of God every day, then what is going to happen? He will be like a tree that will plant by the rivers of and he will bring forth fruit in. Didn't I say that walking in the spirit is a consistent one? It's a daily lifestyle. And I love what the author said. He will be like, like a tree that plants. You're rooted. You're grounded. When the storms of life come, you can't fall down. That's why I keep wondering why we have the Holy Spirit. But when the wind blow, we fall. When temptation come, we fall. When the devil attack, we fall. Because it must be that we are not planted and rooted where? By the river of... Don't you know that the river of water flows consistently and it gives you the right nutrients to continue to grow? Because you have been planted and grounded in the word of God, in the things of God. It's a daily lifestyle. It's a consistent work. And you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And you will bring forth what? I love how the scripture connect. I, I say we want to be able to walk in the spirit so that we can bring forth the fruit of the spirit. How can you bring forth the fruit of the Spirit if you are not planted by the rivers of water? If you are not meditating night and day in the Word of God. You are not connecting to the presence of God daily. If you want to bring forth fruit and the fruit of the Spirit, then you will be planted by the rivers of water. You will meditate day and night in God's Word. Sometimes I feel like it's a drug. Because if I miss one day, I feel like I'm messed up. And I feel like the enemy is going to... But the nice number when you keep putting in, putting in, putting in, you continue to build the spiritual man so that when the, the storm of life come raging, you will be planted and rooted and grounded even by the rivers of... If you pray in season and... Oh, season. Don't catch me. This is the formula. One of the ways to feed the spirit is to put in the word of God. I love how God understands man better than man understands themselves. Hear what God said. 
And Jesus even quoted it again. He said, man shall not live by the bread alone, but by every word. If I want to feed a natural body, we will eat food. But if you don't eat for two weeks going on, what do you think will happen? You will, your body will start to get weak and some folks to die. You think about it naturally. If you do not feed the natural man, then what do you think is going to happen? So you imagine what you are doing to your spirit. This has to be why we can't stand when the storms of life keep raging. Because we have not been putting in the things of God. We have not been feeding the spiritual man. So we have the Holy Spirit, which we talked about last week. We all have the Holy Spirit as long as we believe you receive the spirit of salvation. You receive the seal of God. Amen. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. But most of us just stuck right here. And we don't know how to move on. So you say, Lord, I come into your presence. You say, if I believe and I receive the Spirit. So I have the Holy Spirit. But why can't I stand when temptation come my way? But I am telling you here, you can't stand because you are not meditating day and night in the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing. You can't stand because you are not in God's presence daily. I always wondered and only recently I get this revelation. Because God's word is not contradicting at all. Now, it's about a lot of fight down talk about the Sabbath day and keeping the Sabbath day and so forth, right? And this day is a Sabbath day, and that day, and and throughout history, Christians would have fight down whether we have a Sabbath day or we don't have a Sabbath day. And there's no way in the scripture that say that we have Sabbath day wiped away. And actually, no law have been wiped away. The law have been fulfilled. Meaning, in Christ, we see a bigger picture. Amen. But I say, but Lord, you had to know what you were doing, because when you come into the Spirit, you no longer keep the law. Of yourself but the Spirit of God within you it's going to enable you to keep the law so now that we have the Holy Spirit remember when we read it last week if you love me you will keep my but we can't do it alone because the Spirit of God that he prayed for us to have is now going to enable us to do it for it is God at work in us to both will and to do of his good pleasures and I say this from the revelation that I got maybe it's not as strict as religion make it but perhaps the only way we could truly survive is if we give back at least one day to God. I work every single day. But what it is to give back one day in meditation, is that so wrong? So I said, well, we, we come into the spirit and there we thought that we forget the law. But when you really come into the spirit, you realize you're fulfilling the same law. In Christ, the law is fulfilled. I want you to try it that if you give back one day at least and people say we could do that every single day. no you can't you have to work you must work to get paid and to eat by the sweat of our brow we shall you can't do that every day because that kind of separation and segregation requires your full attention to almighty god if you pull away just one day Maybe you don't have the whole day. Maybe you have a half a day. But let's give some time back to God every single week. You will see how much God understands why we need a day to give back unto Him. We need to give back time unto God. Because God knows that man cannot live by, but by every word that proceeded out of the. God understands that blesses the man that, that is planted by the rivers of water and will bring forth fruit. We need to spend time in God's presence in order for us to reap righteousness. Set your mind on Christ. Donnie McClure can say that our Lord you promised if I keep my mind on you you keep me in perfect peace. Paul said it in Philippians. You keep me in perfect peace. Very sincere if I call upon your name you never turn away from you say, I came for deliverance Deliverance I receive You say you deliver me Lord That's what I believe He started words by saying God promised to keep my mind on I want to keep my mind on Christ 
because that is how he's going to keep me in a perfect peace. Set your mind on the things above. Amen? Present your bodies. You need to give it back to God. I, I, what you guys think I'm talking about? It's a sacrifice. You need to give it up to God. It's a sacrifice. It's a daily living. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you got to present your bodies a living, holy, acceptable unto. This is your what? Could we, could we just see this thing? I feel like we in, it is so in. You cannot live without giving it up to God. The spiritual man is going to weaken. You can't walk in the spirit if you don't sacrifice all that you have unto Almighty. He said, it is your reasonable. That's what we got to do. That's the gap. That's the gap that we have been missing. Everybody want to say walk in the spirit. Okay, how are we going to walk in the spirit? You have to put in the spirit to walk in the spirit. How can you tell me that you are being led by the spirit if you never one day put in the spiritual things? What you are going to be filled with it's external talk, familiar spirits, all sorts of things. It's going to fill your mind and even emotions that is going to fill your mind. You can't rightly judge if you are not putting in the spiritual things. And be not conformed to this world. There is a decision that we have to make because the world is going to fill me with fleshly things. It's like the alcohol. So I need to pull away from things that this world have to offer fleshly behavior cussing drunkenness gathering yourself talking out of terms I need to make that conscious decision to pull away from that and in pulling away from that you know what it will say I will be transformed by the renewing do you know what is that called? That is called repentance. A change in your mindset that results in a change in action. So that you will prove everything that is good and acceptable and what perfect will of God. If you want to walk in the spirit, the will of God, then you will make that decision to make your bodies a living sacrifice. I want to tell you also, prayer is important. One pastor told me, say, every time you pray, you're going to start to resemble God. Now, immediately my mind, somebody tell me that. I like to confirm it with scripture. I said, ah, this is why he made us in his own. Is that uh, the way we look? Some people use um, that to justify blackness. That have nothing to do with you being black or white. It means the man who lives within you. The spiritual man that lives within you. Which is the spirit of God. God himself lives in you. But every time you pray and you put in the things of God, this man is going to mature. This man is going to take full form. That's why you will start resembling Christ. That's why you will start acting like Christ. And that's why you will come back into covenant with God's initial intention for man, which is to be in his image. And that's what God intends for man. That's why Christ died for us. So that we can come back into that place of looking like God and being like God. We call it godliness. He called us to be God. And lastly, guys, in feeding the Holy Spirit, all that I talk about, you can get it in congregation. In the right congregation, that is. All that I talk about, I was like, oh, this is another one. But I was like, hmm, this is not another one. This one includes all that I spoke about. I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about presenting yourself as a sacrifice, pulling away from the worldly things. I'm talking about a prayer life, being in the presence of God, all of feeding the Holy Spirit. You could get it in congregating in the right place. So any place that does not do that, then you got to check yourself. This is why we gather. It's so that we can strengthen the spiritual man. I want us to make that conscious decision to feed the Spirit of God. 
that's the only way it's going to take its full form. The word of God says that if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw. A man service in life will depend entirely on what he sows. This means if you want to walk in the spirit, you can sow your time to the word. You've got to sow to the spirit to reap the harvest of a blessed and fulfilled life, lacking nothing.